Hey guys, it's uh, Alex from Animan Ironworks here, and today I'm out at my forge. I just finished up making these pair of the tongs. They're from the last video, if you want to go check that out. I'll leave a link to them in the top right, so click on the little eye icon and go uh, watch the video if you haven't already. And then make sure to come back to this video. So, um, I'm making a center punch. I have never made a center punch, and I don't own a center punch, but I'm planning on making some hammers, um, and I need a center punch to mark the centers of my holes. Um, and uh, I don't have a center punch for that. I could go buy one, but uh, I feel like that's cheating. I'm a blacksmith. If I need a tool, I gotta make a tool, right? So come along with me. I'm making it out of some automotive coil spring. Um, this is a chunk I cut off of a larger spring. Um, and it had like a coating on it. Took an angle grinder, ground it off real quick outside so I don't breathe all that crap. And uh, yeah, so toss this in the, oh, toss it in the forge and uh, let's get on to it. So. Come along with me. All right, guys, so the first step is to try and get it straight. All right, now that's hot. So you can see here is I'm just making it square. Um, I want to make it square and taper it down towards the actual punching end, or the yeah the punching end. I guess is the center punch. Um, and yeah, so it's kind of what I'm doing here, as you can see. And uh, I'm gonna continue doing that, tapering it down, and then I'll flip it around and work on the other side. Alright guys, so this is all squared up, and uh, in the front, it's going to take a little bit more of a taper, um, and it's going to become octagon is what I'm going for, um, however, I'm going to make this back end square as well, um, just to keep it consistent, and on the back end, it's also going to taper out slightly, um, bad example, ah, where'd it go, I just had it, as you can see here, it tapers back, so it mushrooms a little bit. Um, you can kind of leave it if you want it that way. I think it gives it a little bit more structural integrity. I could be wrong, but that's my impression of why it's tapered ever so slightly in the back end. And this is a tool from George Becker. He sent me quite a few tools a while back, uh, including this big old three or four pound maul. This thing's a beast. I love it. Um, as you can see, I kind of modified the handle just to round it a little bit because it hurts my hands. I don't know why, it just does. Um, I prefer super round handles and this is kind of why I made it. And it works like a charm. I love the damn thing. So, uh, as you can see, it's using it to really, really move some mass. So, uh, yeah, thing's a beast. It's way bigger than the one we, ones we made at Quad State. Or at least it feels like it to me. I could be wrong. But uh, yeah, so time to do the back end. Ah! Hot still! Drop forging. Alright guys, now it's time to do the octagon, so set it on its corners and start smashing. Using a lighter hammer for more precision. Alright guys, so I gotta go eat with the family, uh, we're doing family dinner, and uh, I gotta shut this down. So, uh, I'll come back with you uh, at some point in time to finish up this uh, center punch. So, yeah, get on to it. 
Alright guys, so I'm back out here. It's Monday. Um, and I'm just figuring I'd show you a little progress report on uh, what I've done so far. And so I've taken it from a round uh, piece of steel that was about, I think, six inches long, uh, if I remember correctly. And now it's become this. So this side is square. This side's octagon. This is going to be the back half. I'm going to draw this down a little bit more and a little more severely towards the front to make the uh, center punch. Um, that's kind of my plan. And, and just kind of make sure these are all even up, like the lines are crisp. Um, if I need to, I can just grab an angle grinder, uh, make sure the lines are crisp. It doesn't really matter, I don't think, as long as it's kind of in that round-ish shape. Um, and currently, I've drawn it out uh, about an inch. So it's about about seven inches. Um, seven and uh, seven and a quarter, seven, seven and three eighths, somewhere in there. Um, that's about as much as I got done so far. And uh, so I'm going to heat it back up. I'm going to start drawing this out on the square. Um, and then I'll transition back into octagon. Just drawing it out a little bit more, um, just to get a little bit thinner so I can see my, 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 my material a little bit better. So um, if you want, you can keep it uniform throughout. It really doesn't matter. Uh, it's kind of what I'm doing. Though. So uh, stick along and uh, we'll get to it. So I think it's about time to uh, take this down into octagon all the way down. You can see how it's drawn out. I've drawn out about another inch out of it. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think it's about ready to start starting on diagonals. And a uh, good way to show this, it's cold already. See it's got nice crisp corners. Hit on the corner, you can see how it flats it. And just you know, work your way around all the way up and down. And you can see how it was square here, and it was square here, and then it just knocked off the corner. So, it's a good way to visualize it. Back into the fire. Make sure you keep it hot. You can see there's still red in it, but it's no good for forging with uh, higher carbon steels like this. Alright guys, so I have it uh, kind of octagoned all the way through, and it looks pretty good. I took the time off camera to kind of come back here and fix it. I just hot, hot rasp the end. And then eventually I uh, put it on end and drove into it from the back just to flatten it. And then I put a little chamfer on uh, each corner that you can kind of see like this. I am in the back, it's flat. So that's kind of what I did. Uh, now of course you can do whatever you want with it. And eventually you're going to have to end up dressing it up because this side will not be hardened. Uh, but this side will. So uh, that's kind of what I went with. Do it however you like, that's what I'm doing. Um, but you can see how it's all octagon, ac, octagonal, is that how you say it? All the way through. Um, and now it's time for me to work down on this end. Um, in case you're wondering, I think I started with about six inches and I have about eight and a quarter. So I draw, I've drawn it out about two inches, give or take. I had some pretty beefy coil spring um, that was gifted to me from my cousin. Uh, Cody over in uh, Wisconsin. I'm sure you're watching. So, hey Cody, how's it going? Um, but uh, yeah, so now I'm going to work on this end, make it into a proper center punch. Now you can just grind this. I don't have a 2x72, so my best bet would be an angle grinder. Um, otherwise, I do have an actual bench grinder that I could do this on. Um, but I'm going to try and hammer it in first. If that doesn't work, I'll let it cool naturally and uh, work on it with an angle grinder to get that uh, center in, and then I'll come back to hardening for you. So uh, come along with me as I work on 
fixing the set. Alright guys, so uh, it's been about an hour or two. I've been out here just uh, putzing around, making random crap. And then I had dinner in the middle of it. I ended up making a spike knife because I was felt like redeeming my old one because my old one was kind of crap. Still a work in progress, working on the bevels back here. These upper ones are going okay. Gonna thin them down a little bit still. Not not done on it, but, uh, oh, sorry, you guys totally couldn't see that. My bad. I'm still working down here mostly, um, thinning it out just along the blade. I don't have a belt grinder or anything, so I'm kind of limited to the angle grinder, which is sitting right here. And then this little bench grinder that I actually haven't used before. Uh, I bought it from a friend, and I know it works. And I've Well, I think I used it at his place once, but that's irrelevant. Anyway, he's out of the way. Just a Ryobi. Um, yeah, so, again, progress I've made. It's thicker back here. It thins a little bit coming into this. It's thick in the middle, and it tapers out. And, of course, it's all octagon. And this is kind of what I was doing. Oh, focus. Focus. Focus, focus, focus. There we go. You can see how it's kind of working, but it wasn't really going how I wanted it to. And I did kind of the same back here. So it's flat on the top. Anyway, I'm going to get grinding this. I'm not going to bore you with too much of it. Just tell you a little bit. Basically, you know, just spin. <laughs> Alright, so I'll get to doing this. Alright guys, so about uh, four minutes later, just got... Uh, We'll tip ground in. Drop fortune. And there it is. See my touch mark right there. Came out great. All right. Now it's time to heat this back part to non-magnetic or a, a red and uh, quench it. So that's what I'm going to do. piece is hard. I'm gonna go grab an angle grinder, knock off just a little bit to see what the temper colors are. Alright, got it all shined up. What I'm looking for is just a light bronze to come up and it's, uh, it's working its way to it. And I might stick this back end in the fire just a little bit just to encourage it to come all the way up. Um, but this back half is still hot, so wait and see. So I shined it all the way, like back to the halfway, and you can see how it starts to go from right about, uh, without touching it, from like right here, it's like straw bronze, and it's starting to creep its way forward, but I want to get all the way up to the top, so what I'm going to do stick its back end in the fire all right get keep it getting hot and it's gonna push these temper colors all the way up and you can see how this is starting to go purple and it's slowly climbing its way up I'm not gonna put it in very long and I'm gonna make sure to keep a very careful eye on it and then I'm gonna quench off this very tip because I know it'll be tempered and then just keep this cold and let this the rest of it cool down kind of naturally so that's what I'm going for Alright guys, you can start to see the temper colors really start running. Got the bronze right here. And slowly creeping forward. Obviously I got the, the back end hot to encourage the heat to sink all the way through it. And I can see those temper colors starting to run. So I'm going to flip my tongs to hold the middle and uh, get ready to quench it off when the bronze hits.
Alright guys, definitely see it's starting to smoke pretty bad, but you can see how it gets bronze all the way up to that tip. It's great lighting for me, awful for you. I can show you it's bronze. And uh, yeah, so that should do it. And uh, that's the center punch. So I'll come back with you in just a minute. All right, guys. So uh, I'm all done now. I got uh, the center punch right here. It's uh, here. Let me check. It is. Oh, let's measure in U.S. units or imperial units. About uh, eight and a quarter. Or for you metric guys, it's like 25 and 3 fourths uh, centimeters. Um, and yeah, that looks right. Metric. Um, but here we go. So here it is. It started off as a six inch uh, chunk of this stuff. It's a coil spring, as you saw. It's mighty thick. Definitely a size down a bit but uh, here we go so it uh, works I tested it out already on a piece of steel it, uh, leaves a mark and uh, still sharp so and I'm not sure well you guys can see the temper job but it's definitely a full bronze like if you look at it in person it's definitely a proper bronze so um, there we go so ah, there's an anvil right there I should know that Alright, so uh, thanks for watching guys. Um, if you haven't seen it already, go watch my last, uh, second to last video. It was on making a pair of tongs uh, for slot, or slotted jaw tongs. Um, it's a good watch in my opinion. Also, I made it, so go watch it. Um, but yeah, so thanks for watching. Please drop a like, uh, comment down below, and subscribe. And I hope to catch all of you guys in the next one. Bye.